Hey everyone, Troy here. Hope you're doing well. I'm really excited because today I'm going to show you how I got this picture. So this is one of the two pictures that I got last week on my Seascape Adventure in Thousand Steps. I'm so excited. I can't believe it turned out this well. I thought it was going to turn out nice, but it turned out even better than I expected. I just want to say thank you so much to everyone that's been watching my videos and the people that have subscribed. Thank you so much. It means the world to me because it means that people are enjoying what I'm doing and watching what I'm doing and I'm eternally grateful so thank you so much and I hope that you continue watching and learning from the things that I'm doing so thank you thank you so much so without further ado let's go into how I edited this picture alright so before I get started I just want to show you guys um, my keyboard shortcuts uh, or everything that I do on the keyboard is gonna be down here in the bottom right corner so you can see, you know, when I press shift, it'll bring up shift there, command right there as well, and alt and control. So also in addition to that, uh, it's going to bring it up here in the upper left corner. So hopefully that'll kind of help you guys out and, you know, you'll be able to do this relatively easily. Um, that should make things a little easier. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna get started. So I'm gonna open up Adobe Bridge right now and I'll show you why. So Adobe Bridge is a great tool to kind of sift through all your images and just kind of look at what you have to work with. So I've opened it up, I'll go to my computer and then here is my SD card with all my images. So I'm gonna open up this second folder here. Now this is definitely going to be the photo that I start with. Um, this is a great photo because I really love how it looks down here. And the sky isn't too badly overexposed. I am going to have to adjust that a little bit. But for the most part, I love how this photo looks. Now I'm going to be using that photo. And in addition to that, let me sift through what I have. But I am going to be probably choosing a ground picture. Um, just with a little bit more going on and a little further down, you know, so that there's some action going on down here. So let me see what I got. Um, okay, so let me just make sure. Yeah. Okay, so I really, really like this picture. Um, I like how the water looks kind of around here. So right now I have this picture picked out. And I have this picture picked out. I'm going to use these two pictures for this part and then down here. Now I'm going to choose one more picture that I'm going to work with. And I'm going to look for a picture that has a nice sky that's not super overexposed, that, that looks natural. It looks exactly like how it did when I was there. So let me kind of sift through these and see which one I like. Okay. So I think... Yeah, you know what? I think I'm going to use this one right here. I really like this one. It's it's a little brighter in here, so it won't be hard to uh, exposure blend. So again, I'm going to be using this picture right here for the sky. I'm going to be using this picture right here for the ground or pretty much the closest to the camera because it looks nice there. And then lastly, this will be my main picture that I use. So I am going to open up this picture in Camera Raw to kind of make some adjustments to the picture and then from Camera Raw open it up in Photoshop. So I'm going to right click this, open in Camera Raw. See I've already kind of adjusted some of these settings. Um, I do like kind of where they're at right now but just to kind of go through it. Um, I didn't change the exposure at all, didn't change the contrast at all. I did bring down the highlights, so as you can see, when I bring up the highlights, this little red area that's painted is kind of what's overexposed. So I'm going to bring that down, I think I had it at about negative 55, and that way it kind of brings it to more of what it looked like in person. Shadows are the opposite effect, it kind of affects things here in these shadows right here. So as you can see, as I kind of bring up this number. You can see these shadows start to come up a little bit, they brighten, but I don't want it to be that bright. So I am going to probably bring this down to about 45, 
just to kind of maintain those shadows a little bit. Uh, probably keep it at about 48. Now the whites just kind of make things pop a little more in the white region of the picture. And then the blacks do the same thing in the black picture. So I just kind of pop these a little bit. Now for clarity, that is essentially bringing out a little bit of detail in the picture. So I just bring, bring this up a little bit to 11. Um, with that, it just kind of makes it a little sharper, but not too sharp that it starts to look fake. Vibrance is basically your color. See, as I bring this up, it's not saturation, but it just kind of the lumens, it just kind of changes a little bit. Now, as you can see, if it's really high like that, it just looks fake. So I bring it up only about 10, just to kind of give it a little bit more pop and a little more interesting. And saturation is basically just, as you can see, just really saturates, makes those colors really stand out. And I don't like to bring up the saturation too much because again, it starts to look fake. But uh, I'm gonna bring that up to about 10, I think. Okay, so I'm gonna open up this image and it's gonna open it directly in Photoshop. As you can see, it's kind of working down here and Photoshop's gonna open up. All right, so here we have our image. So this is gonna be our base image. Now before I open up my next image, I am actually going to create a new canvas and that's gonna be where I import and move all of the pictures that I open just so that there's a clean canvas to work with. And I wanna make sure that the width of the new canvas that I have is the same dimensions in pixel wise that the images I'm working with. So. Before I do that, let me just show you. I'm gonna hold Alt, Command, and I. And that is gonna bring up the image size of this current image that I'm working with. Now, as you can see, it's 5,472 pixels wide. So what I wanna do is when I create my new canvas, I wanna make sure that that's the exact same dimension width-wise. And, and you'll see in a second, I'll explain that. Now the height of the uh, canvas that I'm working with doesn't necessarily matter because once I have my image done, I can crop the height, but I do wanna make sure that it is more than my current image because I know I'm gonna be adding uh, up top, I'm gonna be adding to the sky, and I'm gonna be adding down low for the, uh, the ground. So I'm gonna open this up and you'll see it is gonna be pretty tall and you know the same dimensions width-wise. All right, so I am going to select this picture, drop it down over here so that it's out of the, the tab up there, and then select it and pick it up and drop it on here. See, as you can see, width-wise, the canvas is the same size, but there is a little bit of space to work with top and bottom. So I'm gonna bring this up to about right here. All right, now I'm gonna go back to Adobe Bridge, and I am going to find my ground that I'm gonna be working with. And that is right, I think it's at the end here. Yeah, right here. All right, so I'm gonna open this up in Camera Raw. And I am going to kind of mess with the settings a little bit. Like I said, again, I kind of changed things around earlier just to kind of tweak the colors so I know exactly what I want. I'm not wasting too much time, but Brought the highlights down a little bit, brought the shadows up. Blacks and whites are pretty much the same. And I did pretty much the same thing with uh, clarity that I did in the prior picture. So I am going to open this up. It's going to open it up in Photoshop. Now, as you can see, it's up here as a new tab. I'm going to bring this tab down. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did with that last picture. I'm going to take this picture and drop it on top of the new canvas that I created. And because this picture, this one right here, the layer two, is gonna be my ground, I wanna drop this down here a little bit. Because as you can see, it kind of covers more down here than this image does. Now to get it to match up, what I like to do is I like to kinda of just zoom in here. So press Z and get in here and then just see kind of where this rock is. Maybe not zoom in that much. And just kind of see where this rock is in relation to where the rock is on the, uh, the image I had there before. So I'm gonna unsee this layer, kind of look at where this one is. See the rock is right about here. 
So I want to move this one up so that it's pretty much at the same height as that and pretty much the same composition. Now it's not going to be exact, but you can pretty much gauge it. Now that looks pretty good. Let me bring it down a little bit. And that looks pretty good. So basically I have this image uh, selected. I'm going to copy this bottom layer or duplicate it and uh, I'm going to put it on top of the other one. So duplicate layer and drop it right on top of this. Now what that does is it basically gives me a fail safe that if by any chance I kind of screw this up, I can go back and I have another layer down here. Anyways, I'm going to take this top layer, which is the same as layer one. It's a layer one copy. And I'm just going to start erasing down here just to kind of reveal that layer underneath layer two so you can start seeing the ground a little bit and you'll, you'll see what happens. I'm just erasing very subtly. Okay. And basically what I'm removing is this line right here so that the two images start to become one. Sorry. So there you go. All right. That looks pretty good. You can see the two images have kind of come together now. I am going to kind of see, make sure that it looks good together. So unsee and see it. I'm going to probably come back in this second image, a second layer here. And just kind of erase a little bit up here. Just kind of give it a little bit more of that top layer where it's blending in. Kind of gives it a little bit more of a natural look, a little more blended in there. Maybe not so much. Yeah, that looks good like that. All right, so now what I'm going to do is select this bottom layer and hold shift and click this top layer here. Now I've selected all three of these layers. I'm going to right click and I'm going to merge these layers together. So now that has made one image. Okay, so I'm happy with this down here. Now I'm going to select my next picture that is the sky here to try to bring down the exposure, just kind of make it look kind of what it looked like in person. All right, so let me find that picture right here. All right, so I'm going to open this in camera raw. And again, I kind of mess with these a little bit, brought up the exposure a little bit, uh, brought down the highlight, brought up the shadows a little bit so that it's a little brighter in the shadows and pretty much everything else is the same. All right, so again, I'm going to take this picture. It's the one that I just brought in. Drop it down, select the image, and then drop it right on top here. And I'm going to try and line up the horizon now. So I'm going to line up the horizon right here. Just try and make sure that it's pretty much the same. It's not going to be exact, but it'll be pretty darn close. Looks pretty good. Okay, and again, I'm going to copy this bottom layer. So duplicate layer. Okay. And then I'm going to put this on top of that layer I just brought there. And we're just going to start erasing this layer right here just to bring out the, uh, the sky and the layer just below it. So as you can see, it's looking better and better with each erase. really want to just get rid of this line here and I'll go back and just make sure that it's gone but let me zoom out and you can kind of start seeing see that looks nice it looks like it's starting to come together well okay, and just kind of erase along here now it's pretty easy around here it's pretty easy in this sky right here going to be a little more difficult around the rock here. So I want to make sure that I'm going to select all that, which I'll get to in just a sec, but let me just kind of get this part of the sky looking pretty solid. All right, so that looks good. And then I, I like the starburst, so I select the layer below just to make sure it's still there. All right, so let me show you what I'm going to do. 
right here for this rock to make sure that uh, you know I select the rock so basically you want to come over here on your sidebar you're gonna bring up the lasso tool. if you select it you have your lasso tool uh, polygonal lasso tool and magnetic now I like the polygonal one it doesn't select things for you and it's pretty straightforward so select that and you're gonna click on your image and you're just gonna kinda click around where you wanna select so I'm gonna select this rock here and you know I'm only gonna be really working the horizon up so that should be fine so I've selected that and then I'm gonna go to file or select and then select color range. Now I'm gonna pick a color that's kind of in between what all this is looking like, so probably about there. As you can see down here, that really chose exactly what I'm looking for. And here in the fuzziness, if you go all the way down, you don't want that. You wanna make sure that that pops as much as possible. So I'm going to bring that up to probably about 185 and that'll probably do a really good job of selecting that. Yeah, that, that looks nice. So I'm going to just kind of zoom in just to verify. Yeah, that that's nice. So I'm going to just kind of maybe fix it a little bit more. Okay. All right. So that is my rock selection. I am going to just kind of clean it up a little bit more just so that I'm not getting holes through the rock or anything like that. Alright, so I'm going to save the selection as rock. And here's the key. So right now in this image I have the rock selected. What I want to do is select the sky and around it. So I'm going to hold Alt command I. Oh, wrong. I am going to hold shift command I. And what shift command I does is it selects the inverse. So right now on this top image, I have the whole sky and everything uh, selected. As you can see, the marching ants here are, are selecting the sky. Alright, so now that I have that selected, it'll be much easier to erase along here without, you know, affecting that rock there. So I'm erasing, and I'm not really too worried about the rock there. It can go even a little bigger and kind of bring it out. As you can see, it looks really nice, blended well together. All right. Gotta come over here and make sure this is blended together well. All right, so I'm going to deselect with Command D. And here's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just kind of zoom in here and just make sure everything looks natural and there's no line showing the images blended together. And that looks pretty good. There's no line here. And I'm going to do the same down here just to verify. It looks good. There's no line. He's blended together really well. All right, so I'm going to select all the layers. Shift right click and then merge layers. Now remember how I said it doesn't matter that there's white here because we're going to crop that out. So press C and it selects your crop tool or if you want to uh, select over here, it's right here in your menu. I'm going to come down and come up. Okay, and that crops that out. That looks good. So then I'm going to flatten this image to kind of get rid of the background. I don't need it anymore. And then I'm going to do the lens correction tool. So what you want to do is shift command R. What this does is it brings up your lens correction tool. And what I'm looking to fix is the horizon here. The horizon is a little slanted. And if you have a seascape or any landscape and your, your, your uh, horizon's a little slanted, it really detracts from the picture. So I just kind of want to correct that and make sure that that looks good. I'm just going to tilt it until the horizon is matched up with these lines. And it's really important that you have these lines and you can uh, take those off or on here down where it says show grid. So it takes those lines away. You want to show that just so you have a reference point of what a true horizontal and a true vertical line is. So I feel pretty good about that. Maybe a little more. And that looks good to me. And just another tool in here, the geometric distortion. 
this right here, basically what it does, if you pull it to the right, it basically kind of sucks in the middle and, or, you know, the, the middle kind of goes out a little bit in the outside. The outsides are kind of sucked out and it pushes the middle away. Now, the inverse of that is if you go the other way, it sucks the middle towards you and pushes the outside away. So again, if you go to the left, sucks the middle. If you go to the right, it sucks the edges. So you don't really need to do that on this image. And most of the time, if you do do that, you can just do little subtle changes. Anyways, I'm happy with how that looks um, distortion wise and lens correction wise. So I'm going to say that and see how it kind of straighten it out. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the sky and the ground to see if there's any like dust particles. And of course there is um, on these sensors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use J and J will bring up the spot healing tool, which is right here on the sidebar spot healing brush. And basically what that does is if you select something here like this uh, dot that I have dust, you select that and it's gone. It basically determines what you're trying to get rid of and it's a really effective tool for getting rid of small little things. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get rid of these clouds a little bit here too because they look kind of dusty and I don't like that. So I kind of just get rid of these a little bit. Get rid of this dust here, a little dust there. It does a really nice job of getting rid of that. And it looks pretty good down here. One right there. So it's just a good thing to do. Just kind of get rid of your dust specs on your sensor and it'll make your image just look a lot better. You really have to look for them sometimes. So I'm pretty happy with that. So yeah, I think for the most part, this image came across uh, really well. Uh, I really like what, what you know it looks so far, but there's just some few minor things I want to do to it to kind of make it pop a little more. So I'm going to come over here to the sidebar and I'm going to bring up this sponge. Now the sponge is a saturation tool and I want to do this very subtly. I just kind of want to put it, see how my percentage is down to 2%. I'm just going to kind of wipe over the sky right here. Going to bring out the colors there, wipe here in the, the ground, and just kind of bring out a little bit of the colors. Not too much though. The last step is I'm going to click over here again, bring up the dodge tool. And the dodge is going to, you know, it depends on what range you choose, but typically for dodge, you want to use that for your brighter parts. So either midtones or highlights. I have it currently selected on midtones. So that's just going to kind of brighten things up a little bit. Now, if you have that selected all the way, if you have it up at 100%, you'll kind of see what happens. Watch, it just brightens everything up. Now, you don't want to do that because it's unnatural and it kind of changes the color temperature of your picture, which is not a good thing. Now, so I like to keep it down at like 6 5%, really low. Okay, and then next and finally, I'm going to dip my burn tool and do the same thing that I basically did with the uh, dodge brush, but this is going to be more for the shadows. So I've selected my shadows here and it's at 5%. So I'm going to go over this and this will just kind of make things a little dark and make the image pop a little bit. And then lastly, now this is an aesthetic thing that I like to do with this image is I am going to transform it and I'm going to flip it horizontally. So you can go to edit, transform, flip horizontal. And just to me, I think I like how that looks a little more. I like it flipped this way. Now, you don't have to do something like that, but but I just like it for this image. So anyways, um, yeah, I'm pretty much happy with how this looks. I might crop it a little bit just for artistic purposes. Kind of get it framed a little better. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so I think that's pretty much all I did for editing. So again, just took my base image and then I took two more images, one for the ground here and then one for the sky and just kind of erased to get the proper exposures and parts of the image that I want. Now the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to be saving this image and I like to save two different images. I like to save one that's a print version 
That way it's a little bigger. It's got my higher uh, resolution on there. So I'm going to open this up. And I have a file in here somewhere for photography or seascapes. There we go, seascapes. So I'm going to do this one. It's going to be titled Heart of the Sea Print. And you want to make sure that you save it as a JPEG. You can do TIFF as well, but JPEG is, is fine. So saving that, and you want to make sure it's max quality. Okay, and then I'm going to do Alt Command I. Alt Command I is going to bring up the image size. And what I do for this now is rather than being the original uh, ratio, I'm going to bring this down to 2000 pixels. That'll make it a little smaller, a little more internet friendly if you want to share it online. And then I'm going to save this one now as Heart of the Sea. JPEG. And then again, save this as a JPEG. So there you go. That's uh, pretty much how I edited and saved these images. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I really appreciate it. And I hope that you learned something. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment box below. If you like what you see, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be doing stuff weekly for photography and film. And if you want to see more of my work, you can go to my website at troynicolic.com or you can find me on Instagram at troynicolic. So until next time, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.